<laughs> he does these things and we hardly even know it. So I'm glad you are all here this morning. Some announcements for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we're still following the CDC guidelines on um, COVID. So if it's low or medium, masks are optional, which it is today. If you're online, please remain muted during responses. Uh, those online are invited to remain after the service for a Zoom fellowship time. And we'll have coffee, tea, and the fellowship hall after service. If anyone wants to bring goodies on a Sunday morning, people love having brownies or something, cookies. Uh, and we're not doing very well with sign-up sheets. So just bring something if you'd like to share. Uh, upcoming meetings, the choir practices at 9.15 on Sunday morning. All are welcome to join. We have a couple of new singers, and we'd love to have more of you come join us. Saturday, December 3rd, the Acadia Choral Society will be uh, having a concert here at 3 p.m. in our sanctuary. Tickets can be purchased at acadiachoralsociety.org or at the door the day of the show. Uh, tickets are have gone up to $20. Um, that's a suggested donation. Uh, and we've always, you know, just paid $20, but it, we would love to fill our seats. And if you are not able to pay that, it's all right to just come and, and join us. Uh, family tickets, $45 for three or more members. Uh, Sunday, the December 4th, the next day is a potluck from 5 to 6 p.m. And carol sing from 6 to 7 here in the sanctuary. Volunteers are needed to help set up before and clean up afterwards. The sign-up sheet is in the fellowship hall, and you can sign up after church. We are invited to join St. Andrew Lutheran in adopting a family from Ukraine. Please let Pastor TJ know if you're interested in finding out how you can help in that cause. We are collecting donations the month of November for our church's wider mission. Uh, examples of what that supports are on the bulletin board in Fellowship Hall, and there are envelopes in uh, the back of the sanctuary that you can just circle our church's wider mission and put a donation in that if you would like to help out today or next week. If you haven't done so, please consider making a pledge for 2023. Pledge cards are available in the back as well, and David Wilds can answer any questions for you. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? Jean, can you yell? Oh. Thank you, Jean. For those online, uh, she's talking about the Emmaus Center gift tree that we put up in the fellowship hall, and it will be there next week. She's online. <laughs> Are there any other announcements from the congregation or online? No. No. Thank you. Birthdays. Uh, Kathy McGlinchey, today the 20th. Uh, Jimmy and Liz Awalt, their anniversary is on the 24th. They were married in 1957. Uh, Debbie, who's singing in the choir with us, and Hollis, her husband, uh, have a wedding anniversary of 48 years this Wednesday. Happy anniversary. Yay. <laughs> Clint Ritchie's birthday is the 26th, and on the 30th, it's Arthur Ashmore. So be sure and wish them all happy birthdays and happy anniversaries. Uh, please prepare your hearts and minds for service.
Anything now online? Okay, back in business. Let's see what that looks like. It just wants to keep jumping around. Okay, thank you for letting me know and thank you for your patience, everyone. Welcome, I'm Reverend TJ Mack. We are the Union Congregational Church of Hancock. We are an open and affirming denomination of the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are, no matter how often you join us, no matter where you live, no matter who you love, no matter anything about you, you are welcome here. And we are so glad you can join us in person, online, watching it later on recording. We're so glad you're here. Please now stand in body or spirit and join in singing our introit. And please join me in the call to worship. Living Christ, save us from harm. Rage with us over the ways we should have been protected and weren't. Where power does not flow from the top down. Where the wells of consent are deep. In your kingdom, those who stoke the fires of domination shall not have the last word. God is mighty in their gentleness and will pass the peace with American Sign Language. Those who be with you. This week, we're many of us anticipating with joy the Thanksgiving Day that we celebrate with family and friends. You may sit. And so it's becoming an annual tradition to read this prayer of Thanksgiving that Phil Devinish has introduced us to. Let us give thanks for generous friends with hearts as big as hubbards and smiles as bright as their blossoms, for feisty friends as tart as apples, for continuous friends who, like scallions and cucumbers, keep reminding us we had them, <laughs> for crotchety friends as sour as rhubarb and as indestructible, for handsome friends who are as gorgeous as eggplants and as elegant as a row of corn, and the others as plain as potatoes and so good for you. For funny friends who are silly as Brussels sprouts and as amusing as Jerusalem artichokes, and serious friends as complex as cauliflowers and as intricate as onions. For friends as unpretentious as cabbages, as subtle as summer squash, as persistent as parsley, as delightful as dill, as endless as zucchini, and who, like parsnips, can be counted on to see you through the long winter. For old friends, nodding like sunflowers in the evening time, and young friends coming on as fast as radishes. For loving friends who wind around us like tendrils and hold us despite our blights, wilts, and witherings. And finally, for those friends now gone, like gardens past, that have been harvested, but who fed us in their times that we might have life thereafter. For all these, we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Written by Reverend Max Kutz. Please join 
and rise again in body or spirit, join in singing, we gather together in our red hymnal number 23. Please join me in the invocation. Holy God, through the generations you have spoken to us. You have sent voices crying in the wilderness. You have sent the words of an overjoyed new father and an expectant mother. You have sent the assurance of a condemned man on a cross. Quiet in us any voice but your own that by the power of your spirit, we might hear the words you speak to me. Ava Bell, come on up by the stairs. What a great weapon. Oh, gosh, I wish it did. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you want to answer it because you want to talk about that. So I want to talk about the genocide. You know, getting things away. You have experience with that? Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's worth it. Might as well buy the house. Okay. <laughs> and what kind of experience do you have with Jenny? Yeah, so giving jumps too far again. Okay. So talk about being a gem, getting things away. Um, and set a picture like this because you just are trying to you look at a view you give a picture of a view to her did you move away yeah but you get to talk with her and face her yeah So I'm going to ask some questions, and everybody wants to say about you give me a thoughts of what comes down what you think is true or false. And then I ask the way you can make it fair. You don't have to be a mother to be generous. Only rich people have enough for gifts. Like doing about 
they can't really make a difference in the world. It feels good to feel. Thank you. What are some things that we can do? Draw a picture and send it to your friend and move the aisle. And you can contribute to that mural that we made this summer. It doesn't mean that we're in that we can be drunk. But today, you can say that you inspire people. You can ask the mom to help make cookies. <laughs> that is for you that you can share. Some for you, some to share. Maybe take to the town office and say, hey, thanks for working. Fire, thanks for your service. Thank you. Jealous. A person has a fire gun. I'm going to be in your school to get to know people in the country. Think of one thing that's going to be in the shadow system like this. Think of it now to say it to do. So thank you again for giving us generous hearts. Give us the ideas, and the will, hands, and the feet to make it all happen. Is it too tall for you? Maybe you sit with mama then in color in the. <laughs> Listen for the word of God in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall no longer fear or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel, Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Here ends the Hebrew scripture lesson. Now listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his child David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies 
and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness in his presence all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to shine upon those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. This is the good news. Most of you wondering why I was sitting adoringly at their feet because I needed the microphone closer to them, according to those folks online. So we'll get through this. Not our best uh, sound day. So keep coaching me, those online. We'll make sure you, you hear it all. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen.
Our passages from the Bible this morning are mirror reflections of our world, confusing, violent, and hopeful, all at the same time. That is still the world we live in, not so very different from the ancient world of Jeremiah's time, where chaos and calamity were ever present. The verses we heard from the prophet Jeremiah this morning started with, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Who are the shepherds that Jeremiah speaks of? Surely not those lowly people in the fields. No, the rulers, the kings. Who are our shepherds being called out in these verses? Our leaders, our politicians, our pastors, possibly ourselves. An excerpt of a reflection on Jeremiah that was offered this week by Reverend Marin Tiribasi paints an all too graphic picture of shepherds who destroy and scatter. She writes, I want to say woe to the shepherds and name the ones who scatter so many lives so ruthlessly. The one who declares a new run for shepherdhood and laughs, lips moist at a shearing too deep, too often, of those most vulnerable at the lamb stew of so many lives. Also the one across the ocean who has invaded with massive death, another sheepfold, focusing often on the ewes and the lambs, trying to batter the very sunflowers down and whose own sheep flee rather than fight. That's where Marin ends. Woe to leaders that fail to not only prevent injustices, but woe to leaders that commit injustices. In this passage, Jeremiah names the violence, destroying and scattering, and names the solutions, gathering and rebuilding. Luke's passage offers us hope. We look ahead to the coming reign of Christ and the promise of justice and inclusivity. We prepare to welcome the one that will bring peace on earth. What is one theme that these two passages share? In Jeremiah verse three, I hear God's frustration with their people. I hear God saying, if I want it done right, I have to do it myself. In Luke's gospel, God is doing just that. God is preparing the way for God's self to come to earth, to guide our feet, in the way of peace. The Gospel of Luke opens with the very unexpected announcement brought to each of two families of two very unlikely pregnancies. The very elderly Elizabeth and Zechariah learn through a visit from an angel of the Lord that she will birth a son and they are to name him John. Her youthful cousin Mary is visited by the angel Gabriel and is told that she will bear a son by the power of the Holy Spirit and he is to be named Jesus. Both children were born as foretold in Luke's gospel. The passage we heard this morning is Zechariah's song of praise to God for the birth of their son, John the Baptist. The prophet John preceded Jesus in birth and in life, preparing the way. There have always been prophets, Moses, David, Miriam, Peter and Paul, Mary Magdalene. In more recent times, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Martin Luther King Jr., Archbishop Bishop Desmond Tutu. How about some lesser known names? Nadia Bowles Weber, John Pavlovitz, a pastor and activist, Amanda Gorman, poet, racial justice advocate, Sally McFagg, an environmental justice advocate. Prophetic voices continue to be raised to tell us to prepare the way for the coming of Christ. Do we recognize and do we listen to those walking among us as prophets? The word prophet is from the Hebrew, nabi, nabi, from a root meaning to bubble forth as from a fountain. Prophets are often reluctant, often viewed as eccentric or crazy. Prophets speak truth to power, often at their own peril. Prophets are messengers bringing the word from God across the portal, the threshold from divine to human. 
Really, we are on a threshold. The season of Pentecost, soon to be behind us, the season of Advent ahead. This threshold is an opportunity to let go of our busyness and enter into a calmer, quieter place. As people of Christian faith, we spend the four weeks of Advent waiting, praying, hoping, and preparing. We prepare for the celebration of the birth of Christ, of God made human, by prayerfully crossing an invisible threshold. The Jewish faith utilizes a visible reminder, the mezuzah, to pause when passing through a doorway. They are to affix the mezuzah to the doorpost and touch the mezuzah when going out and when coming in. The Hebrew word mezuzah means doorpost. The custom of affixing a mezuzah to the doorpost fulfills the biblical commandment that you shall write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates. You are to touch the mezuzah when going out and when coming in. And inside the mezuzah are two prayers from the book of Deuteronomy. The first prayer begins, Hear, O Israel, the eternal is our God, the eternal alone. You shall love the eternal your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. When leaving one when leaving one's home, this is a prayer for God to go with us out into the world. When returning, it is a prayer for God to re-enter with us or them into their home. What if we considered all thresholds as invitations to pause, as invitations to enter into the holy? Might we be more mindful of the anticipation of Christ, the coming of God, throughout each day of this Advent season. There are many thresholds that we may observe. We can think of moving through the day as a series of thresholds, from sleeping to waking, from morning walk to meditation, to breakfast, to some meaningful work, to our all too infrequent play breaks, and on and on throughout the day. There are transitions, there are thresholds. Seasons are a threshold from autumn into winter, from winter into spring. When I was completing my hospital chaplaincy, I paused before entering and paused after exiting rooms, that very visible threshold with the invisible holy. And of course, birth and death are thresholds. The mezuzah reminds observant Jews that their homes are holy places and that they should act accordingly when they enter them and when they leave them to go out into the world. Remember now that we too are in a holy time and place. Let us seek to acknowledge and experience God's presence with us each day. Let us prepare the way. Let us make the way ready for God's peace, God's justice, in God's tender mercy. Please join in singing, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, in our Black Hymnals, number 551. Let me stand and body your spirit. I have no mic sometimes. Well, Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please be seated. We're going to once again, we've lost our sound for those online. So I'm going to try to get that back. <laughs> now they can. Thank you. Thank you online. OK. OK, good. We come to the time when we quiet ourselves, especially me at this moment, <laughs> letting the worries of technology go, letting the worries of the world go, and bringing our prayers to God and to one another. I want to bring up, raise up that today is the trans day of remembrance for all those trans people that have been killed because of who they are, because of hate and misunderstanding. So today, Trans Day of Remembrance, we pray for tolerance and for peace among all people. And we give thanks for Vicki's successful hip replacement surgery. Do we have other prayers that we would like to offer through the chat or by unmuting or here in, in the pews, a deacon can bring a microphone. We have always no shortage of people to pray for. Jack and Priscilla, the family and friends of Edward Muse, a neighbor of mine in Sullivan, uh, the brother of a neighbor of mine in Sullivan who died on Tuesday. We pray for Richard Bellows in hospice in Chicago, the father of George Fuller's wife. We pray for Rob McCall and for Steve and Marsha and for Pat and Ed and Kenny and Kathy's sister, Patty, and Steve and Myrna, for Barbara and her household for Heather and Don and Liz and Jim and Tamara and Andrew and Austin's cousin, Danny. We offer up prayers of healing for Gary and for Bruce's sister, Lynn, for David's sister, Sharon, and for Renata and all the women she cares for and all the work she does. Prayers for Betty J and her stepdaughter, Molly, and for Eleanor's stepdaughter, Holly, continued prayers for Tom and Judy's son, Andrew, 
and his family. And for Kathy and Patty's lifelong friend, Kathy. We offer prayers for all individuals and families experiencing addictions. We offer prayers for all caregivers and all affected by memory loss and those living with depression and other mental health issues. We offer prayers for all those traveling near and far, especially for our own snowbirds as they are traveling and wintering elsewhere. And we take a time of silence for our own intentions. All beings everywhere see the light, hear the light, learn through the light. My son, out of Jamal, awesome. May all beings. A fellow transport who passed away in the Atlanta airport and went to see his dad in Austin at 47. So sorry, Patrice, for, for you and Bruce and for his family and friends. All right, Joyce for Brandon coming to visit. Loving God, you have assured us that the days are surely coming when your people will know peace, your people will know justice, your people will know righteousness. You have assured us that our leaders will come to rule with wisdom. We pray this day for those in particular need of justice, righteousness, and mercy. We pray for the trampled, the ignored, the brushed aside. We pray for the homeless, the loveless, and the healthless. Confident in your promises, we pray for leaders in governments, homes, communities, and schools, that they may know the influence of wisdom rather than power. And we declare with faith, the Lord is our righteousness. God of all creation, we pray this day for the reign of Jesus the Christ. We pray that in the midst of chaos, we might hear Jesus' word to us. We pray that in the midst of heartache, we might know Jesus' presence. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. With gratitude, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, make us worthy stewards of your gifts and generous citizens of the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ, through whom we pray. Let us remain standing in body and spirit, sing from our black hymnal number 475, God's eye is on the sparrow. Thank you. 
And now may the holy triune God guide your feet, strengthen your hands, and fortify your heart this day and evermore in the name of the creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Thank <laughs> you. 